Hello, I wanted to read you a chapter called Feel from the book Untamed by Glennon Dowell. Key one, feel it all. On my sixth day of sobriety, I went to my fifth recovery meeting. I sat in a cold plastic seat, trembling, trying to keep the coffee from spilling out of my paper cup and my feelings from spilling out of my skin. For 16 years, I had made um, damn sure that nothing touched me and suddenly everything in the world was touching me. I was an exposed nerve. Everything hurt. I was embarrassed to tell anyone how much I hurt, but I decided to try to explain it to the people in that circle. They were the first people I trusted with all of me because they were the first people I ever heard tell the whole truth. They had shown me their inside, so I showed them mine. I said something like, I'm Glennon and I've been sober for six days. I feel awful. I think this awfulness is why I started drinking in the first place. I, I'm starting to worry that what was wrong with me wasn't the booze. It wasn't, it was in, underneath it. It was me. It doesn't seem like being alive is as hard for other people as it is for me. It just feels like there's some kind of secret to life I don't know. Like I'm doing it all wrong. Thanks for listening, she said. After the meeting ended, a woman walked over and sat down next to me. She said, thanks for sharing. I relate. I just wanted to tell you something that someone told me in the beginning as well. Damn dog. I love dogs, but come on, dude. It's okay to feel, she said. It's okay to feel all of the stuff you're feeling. You're just becoming human again. You're not doing life wrong. You're doing it right. If there's any secret you're missing, it's that doing it right is just really hard. Feeling all of your feelings is hard, but that's what they're there for. Feelings are for feeling, all of them, even the hard ones. And the secret is that you're doing it right, and that's doing it, that doing it right hurts sometimes. I did not know before that woman told me that all feelings were for feeling. I did not know that I was supposed to feel everything. I thought I was supposed to feel happy. I thought that happy was for feeling and that pain was for fixing or numbing and deflecting, hiding and ignoring. I thought that when life got hard, it was because I had gone wrong somewhere. I thought that pain was weakness and that was supposed to suck it. I was supposed to suck it up. But the thing was, that the more I sucked it up, the more food and booze I had to suck down to. The day I began returning to myself, fearful and trembling, pregnant and six days sober in a church basement with shitty fluorescent lights and terrible coffee, when a kind woman revealed to me that fe being fully human is not about feeling happy, it's about feeling everything. For that, that day forward, I began to practice feeling it all. I began to insist upon my right and re responsibility to feel it all, even when taking the time and energy for feeling made me a little less efficient, a little less convenient, a little less pleasant. In the past 18 years, I have learned two things about pain. First, I can feel everything and survive. What I thought would kill me didn't. Every time I said to myself, I can't take this anymore, I was wrong. The truth was that I could and I did it, I did take it all. I keep and kept surviving. Surviving again and again made me less afraid of myself, of other people, of life. I learned that I'd never be free from pain, but I could be free from the fear of pain. And that was enough. I finally stopped avoiding fires long enough to let myself burn. And what I learned was that I am like the burning bush. The fire of pain won't consume me. I can burn and burn and live. I can live on fire. I am fireproof. Second, 
I can use pain to become. I am here to keep becoming truer, more beautiful versions of myself again and again forever. To be alive is to be in a perpetual state of revolution. Whether I like it or not, pain is the fuel of my revolution. Everything I need to become, the woman I'm meant to be next to is inside my feelings of now. Life is alchemy and emotions are the fire that turns me to gold. I will continue to become only if I resist extinguishing myself with a million times a day. Extinguishing myself a million times a day. If I can sit in the fire of my own feelings, I will become keep becoming. So consumer culture promises us that we can buy our way out of pain, that the reason we're sad and angry is not that being human hurts. It's because we don't have those countertops, her thighs, these jeans. This is a clever way to run an economy, but it is no way to run a life. Consuming keeps us distracted, busy, and numb and numbness keeps us from becoming. This is why every great spiritual teacher tells us the same story about humanity and pain. Don't avoid it. You need it to evolve, to become, and you are here to become. Like Buddha, who, made the, made, who had to leave his life of comfort to experience all kinds of human suffering before finding enlightenment. Like Moses, who wandered 40 years in the desert before seeing the promised land. Like Wesley from Princess Bride, who said, life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says differently is selling something. Like Jesus, who walked straight towards his crucifixion. First, the pain, then the waiting, then the rising. All of our suffering comes when we try to get to our resurrection without allowing ourselves to be crucified first. There is no glory except straight through your story. Pain is not tragic. Pain is magic. Suffering is tragic. Suffering is what keeps what happens when we avoid pain and consequently miss our becoming. That is what I can and must avoid missing my own evolution because I am too afraid to surrender to the process. Having such little faith in myself that I numb or hide or consume my way out of my fiery feelings again and again. So my goal is to stop abandoning myself and stay. To trust that I'm strong enough to handle the pain that is necessary to the process of becoming. Because what scares me a hell of a lot more than pain is living my entire life and missing my becoming. What scares me more than feeling it all is missing it all. These days when pain comes, there are two of me. There is the me that is miserable and afraid and there is the me that is curious and excited. The second is me, the second me is not a masochist, she's wise. She remembers. She remembers that even though I can't know what will come next in my life, I will always know what keeps, what comes, sorry, I always know what comes next in the process. I know that when the pain and the waiting are here, the rising is on its way. I hope the pain will pass soon, but I'll wait it out because I've tested pain enough to trust it. And because who I will become tomorrow is so unforeseeable and specific that I'll need every bit of today's lessons to become her. I keep a note stuck to my bathroom mirror saying, feel it all. It reminds me that although I began, that although I began to come back to life 18 years ago, I resurrect myself every day in every moment that I allow myself to become and to feel. It's my daily reminder to let myself burn to ashes and rise new. So I hope you enjoyed that little chapter. It's extreme, this book Untamed by Glennon Dowell is extremely empowering and enlightening and makes me feel like I belong to with her. You know, I can relate to this story, not in regards to being in sobriety, 
but um, just living and feeling and feeling that freedom and just being your true authentic self. Um, please, if you do have any questions, feel free to connect with me, whether it's on our website, nwralbany.org, or on our Facebook page, Instagram page, whatever. Feel free to connect, share your thoughts, comment on this video. Let me know what you thought about the chapter. And if you have any questions about purchasing the book, um, I think it's on, I, I got it on Amazon, and they most likely have it in Audible books and a bunch of other options for you. So I hope that you enjoyed this book, and I hope that you eventually purchase it because I mean that's just one chapter it's extremely empowering and enlightening this memoir that Glenn and Dell created and it's so great to share this inspiration and and these um, these insights with you so that's what noteworthy resources is all about I hope you enjoyed the reading and I'll see you again soon bye